In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use the Auto Inlay Toolpath function. What this allows you to do is compensate for the tool radius when cutting parts out that you want to insert into another piece. So for instance, in this case, you can see we want to take the letter E on the left, cut that out and insert it into the red pocket that you can see on the right. Because of the radius of the tool, if you're using the standard profile and pocket toolpaths, this can cause problems where you leave sharp corners on either the internal or external areas, depending which one you're cutting. What the auto inlay toolpath does is take into account that tool radius, it rounds off the sharp corners and thus allows you to create two shapes that will slot together without any problem. Let's go ahead now and start a new copy of the software to begin. Let's come over, click on the icon to create a new file and we're just going to set up a job which is 10 inches wide, 6 inches high, material thickness 0.5 and XY datum in the lower left and hit OK. Now we're just going to draw a simple letter for our inlay so I'm going to click on the text tool and using the uh, Arial or Arial font here we're going to type the letter E, a capital E, make this bold text height 4 and hit apply and close. With that still selected let's go ahead and hit F9 on the keyboard which is the shortcut key to centre that in the middle of our job. Then I'm going to click on it again to go into the transform mode and then holding the shift key down on the keyboard I'm going to click and drag that to the left and holding the shift key down will just keep that horizontally in line. Now I'm going to do the same thing but this time I'm going to hold down shift and control on the keyboard, click and drag and by holding the control key down as well as the shift it will now keep it in line and also make a copy of it. So when we let go we've got two capital E's. So the aim of what we're doing here is to cut out the shape on the left and then on the right create a pocket that this cut out part will be able to insert into. Now before we get into the auto inlay tool I want to show you the problem that we have if we just use the standard profile to cut this out and the standard pocket to make the cavity that the um, other part would insert into. So let's click on the icon to switch over to the toolpaths tab. Let's double check our material setup. Let's click set. So Z0 top of the block, material thickness half an inch, datum in the lower left and I'm going to set my clearance and plunge and home value to all be something appropriate and it's worth noting that if you do plan to machine this yourself then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling you have available and the material that you plan to use. Here for our version I'm just going to go ahead and take the values there and hit the OK button. Now I'm going to calculate a standard profile and a standard pocket toolpath on these um, so we can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and just hit the uh, page down key on the keyboard to tile the windows. So the E on the left I'm going to select, I'm going to click on the profile toolpath option here, I'm going to set the cut depth to be 0.5, going to select a quarter inch end mill tool here. I'm going to cut outside the part and I'm just going to take the default settings for the rest of this and hit calculate. Then before we preview that, I'm just going to close the preview there, I'm going to select the other E and for this I'm just going to do a standard pocket toolpath. So again I want to cut, um, this time sorry I don't want to cut all the way through the material so let's set this to be 0.25 of an inch. Let's select the same tool, quarter inch end mill. I don't want to use a larger area clearance tool so I'm going to uncheck that, yeah, that may or may not be checked on your copy of the software and again we'll just take the rest of the settings I've got here so an offset pocket pattern and we'll go ahead and hit calculate for that toolpath too. Now before we preview this let's just check the global fill colour option here and we'll leave it set on that kind of dark red colour there and I'm going to say preview all toolpaths. Now if we take a look here, just zoom in to the 3D view first of all, we can start to see what the problem is with the standard toolpaths when we're trying to cut one part to insert into another. When we're cutting outside the part we're always going to get these radius internal corners because of the shape of the tool. When we're cutting inside the part as we are on the pocket here we can get sharp 
internal corners but we get radius external corners and what that means is we have a mismatch between our internal and external corners when we try to slot one part into another you can see this radius here would catch on this sharp corner here sometimes you can see this even more clearly by using the solid preview in the 2d view if we switch on the visibility of the toolpaths using these checkboxes check the solid option here and then just maximize the 2d view hit F to fit then again you can see here where the tool isn't going to be able to get into this corner of our vector but where it has cleaned out around that corner when we're pocketing inside there so this shows the problem that we're trying to overcome when we use the auto inlay toolpaths when we choose these auto inlay options the software knows that we're trying to make one shape to slot into another and it will automatically round the corners based on whatever tool geometry we've chosen so let's go ahead and just close the preview form there and delete these two toolpaths so just going to click delete toolpath twice in order to get rid of those and now instead of the standard uh, profile and pocket options what we're going to use are the inlay toolpath options under this icon here so we'll select our vector on the left click on the inlay toolpath and in this case I just want a straight cut out inlay for my male part so you can see I have four different choices here to start with we're just going to look at the straight and pocket options and then in the second example we'll look at the stepped and hole options as well so with this vector selected I'm going to click on a straight inlay now you can see that the form for the inlay is very similar to the profile toolpath form because it's essentially doing the same operation however I know by choosing the inlay it's going to take into account and round off the corners so again just checking the value start depth is zero cut depth is all the way through the material half an inch and I've got my quarter inch end mill selected which is correct now it's very important that I use the same tool to profile and the same tool to pocket because the software is going to round the corners based on the radius of that tool so very very important to use the same tool on both so here with that quarter inch end mill selected I've got other options as I do with any profile toolpath here um, to modify this toolpath but I'm just going to take the default settings and go ahead and hit calculate now if we reset the preview what I should be able to see if we preview the selected toolpath now is see that that is rounding off these external corners as well as I'm automatically rounding off the internal corners because of the shape of the tool so that's the modification it's made on the profile is rounding off the external corners now if we close the preview toolpaths come back to the 2D view select this vector come back up to the inlay toolpath icon and this time I'm going to choose the pocket option for this I'm going to set my cut depth to a quarter of an inch I'm going to make sure I've got the same tool selected so again using this quarter inch end mill offset pattern I'm just going to take the default settings again and hit calculate and this time when we preview the selected toolpath what we should see is it's rounding its internal corners here so now we've got a match between the rounding of the corners on both the external and the internal corners for both shapes and that's been done automatically by that choosing that inlay toolpath option if we want we could come back to the 2d view I could switch on the visibility of both toolpaths and we can also see that that's uh, very much evident in the solid preview as well so again you can see it clipping the corner here so it's cutting inside there and then you can see here how it's clipping the corner here so again just making sure we get the match between the two so at this point it's easy to imagine cutting these parts out and slotting them together however there's something else we have to take into consideration when actually practically cutting inlays and that's the fact that we do need there to be a very small difference between the sizes of these in order for one to fit comfortably into the other if we cut them both exactly to size as we are here then we're going to find it very difficult to slot the E into the pocket albeit that we've rounded the corners because the fit will be too close so the way that we normally tackle this is to add what we call an allowance to the toolpath to slightly undersize the um, male part or slightly oversize the female pocket and that will just give us that difference between the two to allow one to slot comfortably into the other now this allowance can be added on the male or the female or on both 
but typically uh, what most people would tend to do is not add any allowance to the male but then go ahead and um, add allowance to the female. In fact good practice is typically to cut the male part out first and then to test fit it as you cut the pocket for the female. So you have the male part cut, you cut your pocket for the female, you try the fit and if it's um, too tight then you can go ahead and calculate a new toolpath, recut the female while it's still in situ on your machine and get that um, fit between the two exactly right. So here we'll go ahead and add the allowance to the female. So let's double click the pocket inlay to go in and edit it. And we're going to come down and here you can see it says pocket allowance. So the value for this will vary depending on your material, the accuracy of your machine, the size of the tool, maybe even what finish you're applying to the parts. Um, here I'm going to put on a reasonably generous allowance of 0.02 of an inch. So that will overcut the size of this pocket 0.02 of an inch. Hit calculate. And if we preview that and we look closely at the 3D view, we should see the pocket get slightly bigger. It's a little tricky to see that, but one way um, of that being a lot clearer normally is to come back to the 2D view, switch on the visibility for that, and then to just zoom in there. And now you can see how the shaded area is coming past the edge of our vector, and that's just showing me how much larger the pocket would be, and that's how much space I'd have on each side to make sure that the male part would fit in there comfortably. So very, very important to remember to add some kind of an allowance when you're doing an inlay if you want the parts to fit. Now if we like the way the part looks at this stage, then we could go ahead and close the preview toolpaths form and save the toolpaths out and cut them on our machine. It is worth noting in this case that we've actually created both our male and our female parts in the same uh, session of the software, effectively using the same piece of material. That would typically be quite unusual and normally you'd probably have one session of the software where you'd create the male parts, another session where you create the female and they'd be cut out of two separate pieces of material. And the only thing that you really have to um, remember in that case is to use exactly the same tool size between both sessions to make sure that the inlays match. For the purposes of the tutorial it's much more convenient for us to just work in a single session which is why we've done it like this. Now let's go ahead and save the file in the project folder. We'll save this and we'll call it uh, inlay guide underscore toolpath and hit save so you can open that and take a look at the file in this state if you want. What I'd like to do now for the second part of the video is just show you the other two inlay options that we have. And that's the ability uh, that rather than to cut a pocket for the female we actually cut a hole and then for the male we add a step around the outside of it and the reason that you might use this combination is if you wanted to create what are referred to as push through letters. So we cut the hole for the female, then the male part would be pushed through from the back and the um, shelf that we'd cut around the outside of it would act as a mating surface to be glued um, or affixed some other method onto the sign or the back of the sign itself. And this is quite common to use this for say aluminum facing with acrylic push through letters that might be backlit. So let's go ahead and delete the two toolpaths we've got here. So I'm just going to select the delete option. So now we have no toolpaths again. Now we're going to come over and select this vector, click on the inlay toolpath option and this time we're going to do a stepped inlay. So again this is similar to the profile toolpath but now we have this additional section here where we can specify a step depth and a step width. So in this case what I'd like to do is set my cut depth to be half an inch. I'm going to select a quarter inch end mill tool. So remember we need to use the same tool um, for both the male and the female. And in this case I would like to leave a shelf at the bottom of about an eighth of an inch. So one way we could do this is to type um, Z minus 0.125. So I'm basically taking away the thickness of my shelf and when I hit equals it will solve that sum for me. So that's shown that I'll need a step depth of 3 eighths of an inch to leave um, a depth of an eighth of an inch on my shelf. And then the width in this case will just make 0.2 of an inch around the outside. Again I'm just going to leave the other values here, come down and hit calculate. We'll reset the preview 
and let's go ahead and preview the selected toolpath and see what that's going to give us. So there, if we look at that, you can see we've machined down around the letter, uh, down to a depth of three-eighths of an inch, and then we've stepped out and cut out our profile toolpath in order to machine out round the outside, and that's just going to create this mating surface um, on what I've referred to as the shelf here. Now if we close the preview there, come back to the 2D view, select our other E, we can go back into the inlay toolpath, choose the hole option here, want to cut through the material with the same tool, the quarter inch end mill, and this time I can add an allowance offset again in order to oversize the hole there, so I'm going to put in 0.02, I'm going to hit calculate, and if we preview that toolpath there, you can see that that's going to cut out a hole. And if I was to go ahead and just delete the waste material there by double clicking on it, you can see how this piece here would insert through from the back of this. Now, as I mentioned before, typically we'd cut these out of two separate pieces of material where the hole was being cut into a thinner piece of material. So when I push the letter through, then this area would come clean through and stick out from the front. Again, we're just showing you it in the same piece of material here for convenience. Let's just go ahead and close the preview there. We'll save this and we'll call this Inlay Guide Toolpath 2 and save that in the project folder there as well. And again, if we wanted to cut this um, as normal, we could save these toolpaths out with the appropriate post processor. So that's given you a quick guide to the inlay toolpath. As I say, its main purpose is really to allow you to take one part and be able to insert that into another, whether the hole you're inserting it into is a pocket or um, a hole that you've cut through as we have in this second example here. Key things to remember, always use the same tool on both the male and the female sides and you will need to have some kind of an allowance on one side or the other in order to make sure that the two parts will fit together without any problem. And that concludes this video.